In this video lecture, we will be looking into oral cavity, right? The, uh, the diagram that you see in front of you shows various parts of oral cavity, right? We also call it as vocal cavity, right? P U vocal cavity, right? The word buka it means cheeks. Right, means cheeks. So we know that elementary canal. We have uh, discussed about elementary canal in the previous video lecture. So the elementary canal has two openings: the front opening, right, the anterior opening, which is your mouth, right, and then it opens out post posteriorly at the anus, right. The posterior opening is anus, and anterior opening is your mouth, right. And as you can see in the diagram. The mouth is guarded by two soft, movable lips, right? Two soft, movable lips, and we call it a superior lip. The upper lip is your superior lip, and the lower lip is your inferior lip, right? And this, both the lips, the upper lip and the lower lip, is connected to the jaw, right? You can even feel yourself if you take your lip and move it upwards you can feel that your upper lip is connected to the jaw right you can see this this upper lip is connected to the jaw here by this by this kind of this is a kind of connector that connects the lip to the jaw right we call it as we call this this ligament right this is a ligament we call it as labial frenulum Right here, it is written superior labial frenulum because it is connecting the upper lip with your jaw. Right, so it is connecting the upper lip with the jaw at the midline. So at the midline, what you have is your labial frenulum. Labial means lip. Right. So here, just understand that labial means lip. So anything you any any time you hear the word labial, it means lip. So labial frenulum connects the lip to your gum, right at the midline. Similarly, you have inferior, you have inferior labial frenulum here. This is your inferior labial frenulum. The labial is lip, and we know that now frenulum is a kind of a ligament that connects your lip to your gum, right at the midline. Right, and the space between the lips, right? The space between the lips and the gums, right? It's it's an empty space, right? It's an empty space, and we call it as vestibule, right? This is an oral vestibule, right? So this is your vestibule, right? Which is a space, space between your lip and the gums, right? We call it as we call it as oral vestibule or vestibule, right? Now let's look further into it. Let's look further into it. You have this oral vestibule, right? Is the space between the cheeks, the lips, the gums, and the teeth, right? You can see that if even if you keep going in, in, inside you have a space between the gums and the cheeks right the inside of the cheeks so this is also your oral vestibule right now as you move inside the oral cavity what you have at the upper surface right that is the roof right the roof consists of palate right so the roof of the oral cavity has palate right the, if you roll back your tongue you can feel a hard surface at the front end at the anterior part of the roof of the oral cavity we call it a hard palate right it is the hard portion of the roof of the upper of the roof of the oral cavity we call firstly we call the the roof of the cavity oral cavity as palate right the front or the anterior part which is hard right is your hard palate as you keep rolling your tongue backwards right in posteriorly backward inside your mouth you will feel that the roof will keep going soft 
right so the posterior portion of the roof right which is soft is your soft palate right so the roof of the cavity roof of the cavity has as your palate right you have hard palate then you have soft palate and hard hard palate is hard because it is bony it consists of bones right you can see this is i'm talking about this this is your this entire portion this is the roof right this this is the roof of the oral cavity right which we call as we call this roof as palate right the the front part the anterior part is your hard palate and the posterior part this one is your soft palate right and your hard palate is bony is consists of bones hard palate is bony it consists of bones right and it has transverse ridges right it has um, just rub this off it has ridges transverse ridges which we call as palatine rugae right you, you can see this right inside of the roof of the oral cavity has these kind of ridges right these ridges are is are called as palatine rugae right so the transverse ridges right on the roof of the cavity right are called as palatine rugae right it is related to palatine palate so it is palatine rugae right and what is its function the function of the hard palate and these palatine rugae the transverse ridges is to keep the food in place right is to keep the food in position right it helps in chewing the food right so the hard palate basically it's the function of hard palate hard palate to keep to keep the food in place right or in correct position so and, and as you keep moving inside the inside your oral cavity right the roof will keep going soft right so the posterior end of the roof of the palate is soft we call it a soft palate and what is its function its function is that it helps it helps in it helps in swallowing the food right it helps in swallowing right so you can even feel if you swallow the food you can feel that your food touches the soft palate right and when you chew the food you can feel that your food touches the hard palate your hard palate is supporting your the food or it's keeping the food in position right so that you can easily chew it now if you keep looking at this at this roof of the oral cavity you will feel, find that this soft palate this soft palate ends into this conical flap right this conical flap is known as uvula right so hard palate ends in ends into uvula right here is your uvula and what is the function of uvula its function is to to prevent the food from going into nasal cavity right or into nasopharynx so you have uvula right it helps it helps in swallowing right in swallowing the food right and second most important thing that it does is it it prevents the food food and liquid
from going into the nasal cavity right so these are two important functions of uvula now the other thing that you see in this oral cavity is the teeth right we'll be taking a different lecture on teeth but just a brief on teeth the teeth you can see these are fixed in the jaws right in the in the sockets we call it as the jaw socket so these teeth are embedded or fixed in the jaw socket right so your teeth teeth are fixed better let, let's call it as embedded these are embedded in jaw sockets right and you can see that you have different types of teeth we gave these these teeth are classified into different types the three teeth that you see at the posterior end inside the cavity are called as molars these are used to grind food so as and after that comes your premolars that are used to crush and grind the food right then comes your canines canines are used to tear the food then comes your incisors right these three the front teeth right the front teeth these these, these four teeth are your incisors right these are used to cut the food right so teeth and similarly the other half of your jaw also has also uh, have the same pair of teeth in the same sequence same is with the upper jaw right we'll be taking a different lecture on the structure of tooth then comes the floor of the cavity we are done with the with the roof of the cavity right now you have the floor of the cavity floor of the cavity okay before going ahead uh, with the floor of the cavity let's talk about the sides the sides of the oral cavity have cheeks right these are guarded or surrounded by the oral cavity has cheeks at the lateral at its lateral end right so these lateral ends these are cheeks right and outside of the cheeks you have skin right so the and these cheeks have buccinator muscles important thing about cheeks is it has buccinator muscles buccinator muscles and its main function of these buccinator muscles is that it helps in chewing the food and it helps in speech you can feel that when you speak these the the muscles of your cheeks they move or when you chew the food the muscles of your cheeks moves right so the muscles these muscles right that helps in chewing and and speaking are your buccinator one uh, buccinator muscles right now comes the floor comes the floor of the oral cavity right the floor of the oral cavity has tongue you can see this tongue which is a highly mobile muscular organ right and is connected to the floor of the oral cavity via this ligament this fold this this is it's a fold like a labial frenulum you have a similar fold in the under surface of the tongue that connects the tongue to the floor of the oral cavity we call it as lingual frenulum lingual means under the tongue right and frenulum is your your this fold right which is made up of which which is of uh, ligament which is a ligament right so basically it's a ligament right and it's it connects the tongue to the floor of the oral cavity and it limits the movement of tongue posteriorly right because it's it's a kind of a connector so it will prevent tongue from moving backwards it limits its movement basically right so this is about the under surface of the tongue now talking about the upper surface of the tongue and its lateral surface that is the side surface the upper surface and the lateral surface have what we call as projections right on the upper surface of the tongue we have projections which we call as we call these projections on the surface of the tongue as papillae right we know that you can even feel that the surface of the tongue is not smooth 
it has little elevations kind of projections we call these projections as papillae right and it is in these papillae that we have taste buds right and due to the taste buds we feel the taste of various foods like salty right sweet sour right all these foods so let me show you a different diagram of tongue right so that we can right so you have tongue and the upper surface of the tongue right here is the tongue right these up this upper surface of the tongue right has projections upper surface of the tongue and the lateral surface has projections we call these projections as papillae right and these papillae are distributed throughout the surface of the tongue you can see the upper surface the middle surface and the uh, the front the front i'm sorry it should be the front the middle the posterior all these have papillae the projections we call these papillae as i'm sorry we call these projections as papillae right and let's look into the papillae there are different types of papillae the first type of papillae you have is your filiform papillae right filiform papillae these are thread like structures right which are distributed throughout the tongue these kind of structures right you can see these kind of structures these are thread like structures which are distributed throughout the tongue right or some somewhere you will also read uh, you can also read in some books that these are conical projections right or thread like structures and these cover mainly the first two third of the tongue Uh, basically these are found in that uh, on the entire upper surface of the tongue and among these among these filiform papillae you have fungiform papillae fungiform papillae and these fungiform papillae these are again fungi form papillae these are again they are mushroom like projections right they are mushroom like projections that are distributed among these filiform papillae these fungi form papillae are distributed among these filiform papillae so these are also also found throughout the tongue right and the basic and let's let's talk about the other form of papillae the third form of papillae you can see very easily in this diagram that you have this v shaped projections these projections are going v shaped from the surface of the tongue right from the middle of the tongue to towards the lateral surface of the tongue right so you have projections right these projections that go towards the lateral surface of the tongue and these are inverted v shaped like this these are inverted v shaped we call these projections as valet papillae right or or we also call it as circumvalet papillae like valet papillae or circumvalet papillae now since i said in the beginning it is these papillae that contain taste buds right so among these three papillae valid papillae and fungi form papillae they contain taste buds but filiform papillae does not contain taste buds 
right so fungi form papillae and your valid papillae valid papillae contain taste buds right and it is due to these taste taste buds that we feel the taste of the food right important now just remember that filiform papillae does not contain taste buds whereas fungi form and your valid papillae contains taste buds right so basically what is a taste bud taste bud if we talk about taste bud it's it's kind of a piriform it, it has a piriform structure right or it has a oval shape, oval structure right oval barrel shaped structure now you will somewhere you will find it written as piriform structure piriform means it it's a pear shaped which is broad from the bottom with this kind of a structure right and narrow it's it's kind of this this is a piriform structure right so it's a piriform or a barrel tell it uh, i'm sorry it's a oval shaped barrel oval shaped structure oval and shaped structure right and this structure opens to the surface of the tongue right through a pore right we call that pore as taste pore right so important thing about taste bud is it is a oval barrel shaped structure that opens to the surface through a through a taste through a taste pore through a pore we call it a taste pore right and it is through it's it is through this say this is a pore right say this is a pore it is through this taste pore that food when mixed with watery saliva flows into the taste bud right through this pore and since the taste bud contains two types of cells these are the name of the cells are sustanticular cells right and your taste receptor cells two types of cells sustanticular cells right and the second is your taste receptor cells taste receptor cells we also call it as gustatory cells these taste receptor cells are also called as gustatory cells right so when you eat something right and when the food is mixed with watery saliva it flows into these pores right these taste buds right that opens to the surface of the tongue through a pore called as taste pore so the food food flows into the taste pore and when it comes in touch with these taste receptor cells you feel the taste of the food right so it is due to these taste receptor cells that you feel the taste of the food right now let's talk about uh, the different kind of tastes that can be felt at different parts of the tongue right at at the anterior part of the tongue right here you mostly feel the sweet taste right so sweet taste is felt at the anterior part right and at the lateral part these lateral parts what you will feel is salt salty taste right and at the posterior part right which is your where, where you have these v shaped inverted v shaped papillae here you will feel the bitter taste right so mostly this is how you will feel the taste 
Then this is how different parts of the tongue respond to different tastes. Mostly the sweet taste is felt at the tip, right at the front tip. Then at the lateral surface, you have you feel you feel salty taste, and at the posterior end, you feel the bitter taste. Right. I hope this is clear to you. So this this is how the tongue responds to the taste. Now let's look into some important functions of the tongue. We know that tongue helps in ingestion of the food. With the help of tongue, you eat food, you ingest food, right? So it helps in ingestion of the food, right? And you chew food, you move the tongue while chewing the food, right? So it helps in chewing the food, right? And when you swallow the food, you can feel that you involve your tongue as well. Right, so it helps in swallowing the food. Right, and the most important function of the tongue is is that it helps you to speak. Right, so it helps in speech, and it also helps in mixing food with saliva. It helps in mixing food with saliva. So these are important functions of tongue. Right. I hope this is clear. Right. Now in the next video lecture, we would be looking into the structure of teeth, different types of teeth and structure of teeth. Right. I hope uh, all this is clear to you. Thanks.